How is it going everyone? Dax here and today we're going to be reacting to another Quaz Kazart video. We're going to be reacting to how to terraform Venus quickly. This is an old one that came out about a year ago but we saw the terraform the Mars one so it is possible it's just we don't have the stuff to do it now. Would it be more difficult to terraform Mars or would it be more difficult to terraform Venus? We're going to find out in this video probably, hopefully. Let's see. So the video is going to be in transparent mode just in case of copyright reasons we don't want to annoy the wrong people so that's why it's in transparent mode if you're asking anyway away we go leaving earth to find new homes in space is an old dream of humanity and will sooner or later Big be necessary for our survival the planet that gets the most attention is mars a small toxic mm. and energy poor planet <laughs> that just about seems good enough for a colony of depressed humans huddled in underground cities jesus but what if we think bigger what if we take Venus, one of the most hostile and deadly places in the solar system, and turn it into a colony? Not by Sorry. building okay. lofty cloud cities, but by creating a proper second Earth. It Dude. might be easier than you think. Really? Are you sure? You said that about Mars. And we're nowhere near that stage. <laughs> Venus is by far the hottest planet in the solar system with a surface okay. temperature of 460 degrees Celsius. Hot Jesus enough to Christ. not let. This heat is due to the most extreme Ooh. greenhouse effect in the solar system. Mm. CO2 is great at trapping heat, even a rise from 0.03% to 0.04% in Earth's atmosphere is heating up our planet right now. Oh, wow. Venus's atmosphere is 97% CO2. So not a lot also, then. Venus's atmosphere is 93 times denser than Earth's. Ah. Standing on Venus's surface would feel like taking a dive about 900 meters deep into the ocean. The pressure wow. would kill you instantly. Oh my it's god. It's a truly horrible place. That so was why should we even bother? <laughs> First and foremost, Venus is almost as big as Earth and has 90% of its surface gravity. Surface gravity is a big problem like, like when colonizing the solar system because it's very likely that long stays in low gravity places will have negative health effects. Ah. Venus's size means it could be the second largest habitat in the solar system. Hmm. A new home for billions of humans and trillions of animals with oceans, Jeez. lush forests and a beautiful blue sky. A properly terraformed Venus may be the most pleasant place to live outside of Earth. Okay. While we can't exactly terraform Venus today, a slightly more ambitious future version of us could take this project on. Possibly, it will take possibly. a few generations to complete and be a huge challenge like building mm. the Great Pyramids was for our ancestors. But then, it's not like humans have never started projects that took more than a lifetime to complete. True. Okay, true. let's do it. Before anything else, we need to cool Venus down and remove the gas that makes up the extremely heavy atmosphere. As mentioned, there's a lot of it. Yeah. Around 465 million billion tons. Jeez. How do we do that? There are a few options. We could create giant Lasers. solar collectors powering a huge array of laser beams that mm -hmm. heat up the atmosphere so much that it's blasted into space. Although we okay. would need thousands of times the entire power generating capacity of humanity and it would still take thousands of years to remove Jesus the atmosphere. Christ, Another man. way is to sequester the atmosphere binding the CO2 in different compounds through chemical reactions. We could mine elements like huh? calcium or magnesium on Mercury and shoot mm -hmm. them at Venus via mass driver systems, oh, electric we rails that well, make right? rockets unnecessary on smaller planets. The metals would combine to bind the CO2 into different carbonates basically forever. But the scale makes the whole thing impractical. We would need several Civic. hundred billion tons of material to sequester Jeez. the CO2 this way seems like a waste of material and might yeah. take too long. An equally Mercury, ridiculous that idea that could actually work is to put Venus in the shade, literally, by huh? constructing a huge mirror to blot out the sun to just freeze You're gonna the atmosphere. Freeze it? Wait, the mirror doesn't need to be complex or massive, that? just a very thin foil with a little structural support. Building mm -hmm. such a large flat surface so close to the sun will turn it effectively into a solar sail and push it out of position. So instead of one giant circular object, our mirror will consist of many different pieces. Okay. Annular slats of angled mirrors can reflect sunlight from one set of mirrors to the next. Mirrors would be angled, reflecting light from one to another until the light is redirected back. to the back, balancing the force in the front and holding them in position. After a few years of getting the infrastructure in place, things start slowly and then escalate. 
For the first few decades, the atmosphere slowly cools down but stays dense and deadly until after some 60 years, it reaches the critical temperature of 31 degrees Celsius. Suddenly, the great I mean, flood years, begins on Venus bad. as CO2 turns to liquid at this pressure and begins to rain down. A constant global rainstorm of unbelievable proportions lasting the 30 years. The pressure yeah. and temperature suddenly begin to drop in unison. For almost a century, puddles turn into lakes and oceans. The, the surface temperature is now minus 56 degrees Celsius oh and the pressure God. has dropped to only <laughs> seven times the pressure on Earth. I see. Finally, at a really unpleasant minus 81 degrees Celsius, the CO2 oceans begin to freeze and the rain turns into snow. This leaves us with a frozen Venus covered in oceans as hard as rock and gigantic CO2 glaciers. When humans get to the point where we're able to do this, they're going to have a massive god complex and it's going to be very bad for everyone. That's what I'm saying. What remains this of the atmosphere is, is mostly hydrogen talk. at about three times Earth's surface pressure. If you don't mind freezing and suffocating, you can now take a stroll over Venus's surface. Sweet! But the frozen CO2 remains a bit of a problem. At some point, we want to warm up the planet, but if we do, the CO2 ice will melt and fill Just up the atmosphere back to again. The same bit, so yeah. we need some way to hmm. keep it from doing that. One is to simply cover it all with cheap plastic insulation really? and cover it up with ground-up Venus rock or water oceans. Although some planetary scientists will be very stressed out about us building a new planet yeah, containing a potential time like, bomb like that. It? Yeah. A few unfortunately timed volcanoes could melt a lot of CO2 at once and ruin everything. Another wow. obvious solution is to shoot it all out into space and collect it into a small moon for storage and future use. We can make this more efficient by using mass drivers instead of rockets, but moving all that mass will still be a pretty intense challenge that will take some time to solve. Whatever we so end we up could doing never with the atmosphere, to it. move forward we need water, which we could get from ice moons. Europa, a moon of Jupiter, has twice as much water as Earth's oceans. Now, wow. crushing a moon and transporting Wait, it through the what? solar system is not exactly easy. Oh, so instead, that. it might be easier to cut chunks of ice off Europa with an army of construction drones and shoot them at Venus using more of those mass drivers. Space tethers could save us a lot of mm. effort and energy. Oh, we, learn about them. we made They're a whole really video cool. explaining how they work, Sky but in a nutshell, still. they are slings that can take a payload mm -hmm. on both ends. On Europa, they do most of the work needed to Receive catapult it. our ice to Venus. Boom. That's the sick. ice hits the Venus tethers, which gently drop it into the atmosphere, where it falls down as snow. Yeah. In exchange, the Venus tethers get to catch CO2 ice shot up from below and accelerate it into orbit. We can remove excess nitrogen using this same method to further lower our atmospheric pressure. After a few decades or centuries, Venus would be covered by a nice, shallow, frozen ocean a few hundred meters deep. It would look extremely different from today. A few continents and mm. countless islands have formed. This is oh. beginning to look a bit like our planet. Okay, so now the possible. last and most magnificent phase of terraforming begins, making the atmosphere breathable and adding life. Yeah, First, that we need light though, <laughs> and we need to heat the planet up again. Mm. A Venus day is 2,802 hours long, more than 116 Earth Wait. days. So huh? if we just remove our giant mirror, we would grill half of our planet. Even Ooh. without the massive atmosphere, temperatures would reach unbearable levels. Hey. The simplest way to create a day-night cycle and let some energy in again is yeah. with another set of mirrors to illuminate our continents uh, and melt our water oceans. Fake which light. would let us completely control how much energy we get and where it goes. The atmosphere is now Dude. mostly made up of nitrogen and basically Dude. devoid of oxygen. That's so cool. the first inhabitants will likely be trillions and trillions of cyanobacteria, which can get photosynthesizing and release oxygen. Okay. We know that they can quickly turn around the atmosphere of a planet because billions of years ago, they were probably responsible for turning yep. the toxic atmosphere of our young Earth into an atmosphere with enough oxygen for more complex animal life. No doubt, but not no only doubt. that, cyanobacteria can fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and turn it into nutrients that can be used by living beings. This way, oh, yeah. they will essentially fertilize our dead ocean water and prepare mm -hmm. it for more complex organisms. On land, our colonists need to grind down some of the former Venusian surface to make soil for nitrogen-fixing plants to grow on. Eventually, billions of trees would spread, creating large oh, forests yeah. covering massive parts of the continent. Again, 
Venus would turn green. Hell to yeah. speed things up, CO2 would be strategically released to supply the plants and cyanobacteria. Areas already covered with plants could get extra daylight from our orbital mirrors, so the plants mm -hmm. would be active for most of each day. Maybe okay. we won't have to do this with the same plants and animals we know today. Got a Pikachu? As genetic <laughs> engineering matures and our understanding of genetics and the machinery oh, well. of life expands, we might just engineer life as we need it. All in all, it would take wow. several thousand years to make the Peak atmosphere breathable <laughs> by humans. In oh. the meantime, you could stroll around with nothing more than regular clothes and an oxygen mask. Settlers would enjoy a vast new planet filled with resources and bathed in sunlight. They might Damn. think of new ways to use the vast amounts of carbon dioxide, ice and nitrogen orbiting in space above. Industrial mm. processes, rocket fuel or even boosting the terraforming of another planet like tiny Mars. Tiny Venus Mars. We, well, is they've done that one already. Which is kind of cool. Animals roam through vast ecosystems. Cities in the video, no, in real life. I, I'm Billions of settlers <laughs> and their descendants make this world their home. They will see images of the past how Venus was once the most hostile planet around, hey. how it took hundreds of years to freeze hell and to ship in the oceans, and another few thousand years to make it possible to breathe freely. They Crazy. will barely be able to believe it. Okay, well, I don't maybe believe it's, it's not happen, that yeah. easy to terraform <laughs> Venus, and a lot of things must go right for this future yeah, to become was... reality. Yeah. But it is possible, and with technology that is within the reach of a motivated and slightly more advanced humanity that wants to venture into space. The only thing that's stopping oh, it yes. is our imagination. And that, at least, Ooh. is a problem that's easy Ooh, to overcome. Oh, I like that. Ooh. If you think Smooth. about it, your imagination is the only thing stopping you. And now today's sponsor. It was very much similar to the Mars one, just at a bigger scale and more less likely possible. Um, but it was very good. Very, very, very good. Make sure you check out the original video in the description down below. Enjoy this video. Hit the thumbs up. Comment, drop me back to your next. Subscribe if you want to. Channel. Yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Later.